Good evening, I'm your host of Books for Believe in my sister Tosha and on my right I have Evangelist Princess. Hello. And on my far right I have Sister Dunn. Hallelujah, glory to God. And on my left I have Quanita, Sister Quanita. And on my end of my left I have Minister Wade. Praise the Lord. And tonight we will be um, talking about our Un unconditional love series on love does more than what I say and um, Pastor Connor was taught us about um, Paul. Paul was so a confidence in his saints that he knew that his saints would do more than what he say because of the love that they had for him and um, we also learned that Pastor Connor, we also learned about less abuse love that was something that was powerful that was the type of love that we don't know of that we don't know about, most of the people know about just being mentally abused, physically abused, and emotionally abused, but less abuse is just about people's loving you less than, than what you deserve. So, um, Vance's Prince, I want to ask you a little about um, less abuse love. What did you, how can you tell people about less abuse love? Well, less abuse love, I would say uh, people's not giving you what you deserve, you deserve more. They don't know they don't know you. They don't know your trait. They don't know what you need. They don't know your wants. And that's less abuse love because if you knew everything about me, if you started me, you knew my ways, you know what I like, you know what I like to drink, you would know me and you wouldn't give me less abuse love. You would give me the real love. Amen. Amen. That's right. And most people tell you like, yeah, I love you, I love you and I know you, but when it comes to them doing something for you they kind of like give you what what they want you to have instead of what you deserve so since then I'll ask you the same question can you break down less abuse love Ooh, that's I've lived I've experienced I've pushed through that <laughs> test before um, less abuse from my viewpoint is when you accept people treating you less than what you deserve because I'm a child of God I expect to be treated like a child of God I feel like um, when you know who you are when you truly love yourself you won't allow people to step all over you to neglect you to treat you as though you're a peasant when you're a child of God when you're royalty when you're chosen by the, 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 the chosen God when you serve God then you should treat me like a servant of God and that's to the high most but you also have to be able to um, not only just love yourself but to love those around you because when you give love if a person is sold out for God they'll automatically give you love back um, giving you shall receive yes all right and I like when you said giving you shall receive and when and you said about God if you sold out for God and you love God so much that God will always show you and tell you what to give a person that you love. Like he Holy gives God. you the hint. So that's, as you said, the Holy Ghost. So Sister Quinita, I want to ask you the same thing about less abuse love. How would you break it down to the people? Um, just the context of less abuse. Just the context of the words itself. I mean, um, when you when you speak of less abuse love, I mean the love that you giving out, like Sister Dawn was saying, you expect it to come back. You expect if I'm a love you, I need you to love me. But when people give out that less abuse love, that's where you know you have to go into a little more prayer for them because mm -hmm. it, apparently they don't understand what love is mm -hmm. because. If if they understood what love was, how would you abuse somebody that loves you, that have shown you that they love you? In spite of anything that don't happen, here you is got a person that still continue to pray for you, that still is there to pro provide for you, but yet you want to be mean to them and low down and be despiteful and jealous towards them. So, you know, that that's just talks about just that person self, uh, uh, that inward man, you yes. know. Uh, where is that inward man on that person? Where is that on learning and, and, and knowing what love is? And is you know, growing in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Minister Way, um, with you being a minister, I want to ask you, um, how would you tell a person to pray for somebody that, that's giving them less abuse love, that's giving them less of love than they know that they're supposed to receive? And they're giving out more, but they know that the other person is giving them less. 
That is so powerful, and you have to understand what the Bible says about love and understanding love and praying for people. When you know you're not being loved on the level that you're supposed to be loved, you just got to understand the role that Jesus played for the love that he has for the church. And that that's what enables you to overlook somebody else's flaws, knowing that they are not loving you the way, you know, you're giving out that love. And when you expect or know people and can anticipate that a person will fall uh, in that capacity, you don't really take it to heart because you know that, you know, men are fickle anyway. We can't really love on the level that God requires us of to love if we are not in God first. Because when we are in God, he teaches us how to love right and there will be no uh, Mis, uh, misuse or abuse of the way we're being loved when we love by God but the reaction can be appropriate when you know you're not being loved right because you're what you're first in God so you have to be in God and be connected to God and know that this is the expected thing for me to do to pray for this person when I know I'm not getting what I deserve when I know I'm not being loved right I can you know overlook it to that extent saying but God you know he overlooks some stuff about me and I just got to pray this person through. I just got to love them through because sometimes the way we love, it'll teach the next person how to really love us right anyway. Hey Amen. Oh, you said a mouthful. Um, <laughs> you said about the teaching of love by God. Um, I can just say how me growing up, I always just felt like people going to love me regardless because of who I am. And what I didn't know was people loving me for who I am, but at the same time, I'm not loving myself for who God wants me to be. I'm just being somebody that I want to be. And so I had to go and come to church more and more to learn the love of God so I can know how to re receive the love from people, even if they don't give me the love back. But I know why they're not giving me the love back, because they don't love me the way God wants them to love me. So, and that was, that was something that growing up was real hard for me. And I also, um, Pastor kind of was telling us about the um, three special people who mastered in more love and more. And he was telling us about Ekana was one of them, and he was the one that he gave his wife everything, but she was always still complaining about, you know, well, you gave so and so the dress, but you didn't give me a dress. So, um, <laughs> Evans Prince, I want you to break down a little bit about Ekana in the Bible and how he was giving his wife the word, but she just wasn't appreciated. Well, Echonai and his wife, as I can see it on the standpoint, he loved her, but she didn't realize that he loved her. And she thought that, well, I'm, I'm going to put it this way. She thought that he was doing things for others more than he was doing things for her. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we look at it that way. Somebody that love you, we see them doing things more for others than they you see them doing more for you, but you but they supposed to love you more. Sometimes you have to just step out of the box and see it the way it's supposed to be. She could she didn't step out of the box and see it the way it's supposed to be. She seen it the other way. She seen him giving love more to somebody else than he was giving love to her. Oh my God. Yes, yes. So, just this, when you're saying stepping out of the box, like she was thinking outside of the box. Like right. she was being misled by her thoughts. Her thoughts was telling right, her that right. her husband was loving her less than what she deserved. And she was really getting what she deserved. But it's like the thoughts, your inner thoughts sometimes will mess you up so badly. You be thinking Ooh. stuff that you don't even, that's not even going on, it's not even existing, but it's in your mind that this is what's going on. And when God sends you somebody to really love you like Ekonai was in love with his wife, you didn't you wouldn't recognize it because of your thoughts. So Sister, can you break down like your when people think stuff that's not, not there. It's just like an illusion. Like, I, oh, I know this happened, but it's not happening. You know, Pastor Kiner, he speaks on that all the time. People not being filled with the Holy Ghost, not being filled with the Holy Spirit, because even when we do 
are misguided by our own thoughts when we do allow ourselves to fall victim with the attack that the enemy is trying to use to discourage us, use to um, keep our mind off of God. If we feel with the Holy Ghost, we can counteract that. If we feel with the Holy Ghost, we can um, speak that stuff out of our mindset. But we allow that stuff to discourage us. Um, the thought of they don't love me, where they at, how come they not? You end up stalking a person simply because you uh, of what you think might be going on instead of having faith and trust and love and kindness instead of um, thinking those things that be not as they may or instead of thinking on whatever things may be pure, whatever things may be just. Instead of thinking like the Bible tells us to think, we think wicked thoughts. It's the what came once Eve ate from the knowledge of good and evil. She, you start, you have the ability to start thinking evil thoughts and if you can't properly throw that, if you're not still fasting, praying, yeah, continuing yeah. to focus on God, then you allow yourself to get lost in the pit of wickedness. But I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Sister Quinita, I just wanted to ask you the same question. How would you um, just break down Elkanah's love for his wife? Oh, my God. That was so powerful, Dawn. Uh, oh, you God. know, just sitting here, I received a revelation from what you were saying. Thank you, Lord. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Um, God just to hear how you know what uh, his wife wanted, uh, how she saw, to me it was more of a selfish type of thing, you know I want a son, you know you, you gave her sons, you know and he said well am I better than the ten sons? You know I'm giving you everything yeah. everything that a woman would want, you got the money, you got the, the clothes you got, and, and, but in her sight, in her eyes, oh my God, she saw that the things that you're giving me are not fulfilling what I want. Yeah. Oh my God. God. That was so powerful. I just received it. Come on, and, and it yeah, come on Lord. <laughs> it's it's so powerful God. because it helps us to when we looking at other people, when we thinking, you know, they not really showing love for me. They know I don't have any money to pay my light bill, but yet they hand you a bag of food and say, well, why you give me some food when you know I need some money? But you got to come out of your own own self thinking, your own self righteous, and you gotta start seeing things the way God want us to see. And God said, "Is I'm, I'm providing everything that you Come need. On. You're not in want for nothing." Yes. My God. My God. <laughs> Y'all is in this world. <laughs> God is in this world. Thank you, Lord. Um, Minister Way, how, how, what the fire you finna bring about it tonight? <laughs> oh, my God. You all have said it all. Oh, um, my God. I, I think that relating to the story of Elkanah, Anna, and Penina was a comparison and contrast uh, factor where, like Sister Cornita said, uh, Anna was more so focused on her wants where Becca and I was focused on the needs and sometimes when we are not careful we would get our wants mixed up with our needs mm -hmm. so what she wanted was in her mind and in her spirit what she actually needed but Elka and I could not receive that because like you, like you, Kanita said in God when he's providing us with everything that we need you shouldn't be uh, disrespectful or ungrateful because he ain't fulfilled this particular area oh but understanding culture in that time when a woman did not bring forth children she was not considered to be fruitful or productive. So to be unproductive in that culture meant that she was not a man being uh, satisfactory enough to her husband. And that's one of the things wow. that most women feel neglected or rejected at when they feel like they can't fulfill the need, not just for themselves inwardly, but for their mate, especially in that culture. We got to remember that that was the history of this time. It did something to her. Yes. So uh, this is why there was a difference between uh, Hannah position as a woman to Elkanah's position as a man they couldn't she couldn't he couldn't understand that this was a want from her based upon her psychological uh, thoughts of this is what I actually need because I'm not fulfilling the custom of time if I cannot bring forth fruit so you uh, in the Bible that's why it talks about how that we it, we have to understand and break down the difference and know the difference in when God is doing a need and when he's doing a want he'll give you the desires of your heart those are your wants but we have to make sure that those wants are in line with the word of God. My Lord. Yeah. Amen. And you saying our wants and needs, um, we get that confused a lot. Like we want stuff, but it's not what we actually need. And we'll get upset because we're not getting what we want. But God actually be giving us what we need. But at the time, we're thinking about only our wants. And that's what confuses us a lot about 
love when we like you said about we can't fulfill our needs for our husband and sometimes we feel like we're not giving him what he want because this is what we want him to have but actually we are actually giving him what he wanted what he need but in our mind we want him to have more than what we're giving him but to him he's being satisfied with what we're giving him but we're trying to give him what we want him to have instead of just giving him what we already got on the table to offer and then that won't bring confusion in the household and then also when you were saying also about the less abuse is and we can abuse ourselves as a woman less by our wants and uh, things that we want like we desire we we everybody have their own picture of their husband in their head and how they want their husband to be like my husband had to be light skinned because I just love red men but that ain't probably what God wants me to have so with me I was looking for a light-skinned man, but until I walked into Christ and started growing with God, so now I know that whoever God gives me is who he wants me to have. Amen. It can't be who I want no more. It's got to be what God wants. So I cannot get what I want. I only got to get what God wants. Amen. And then um, we, the second person was the woman with the acid Battle Box. Mm -hmm. She brought God a gift. And everybody else was like, why Why you bring God this gift and why you watching this Jesus feed and stuff like that? So, Evangelist Princess, can you break down the one with the Asabella box? Well, the, the lady with the Asabella box, she brought Jesus a gift because she knew who Jesus was. Right. Some, oh, some people walk among Jesus back in those days mm -hmm. and they still didn't know who Jesus was. Mm -hmm. And we here today, even though we not we got a little shy, even though we not walking with Jesus, but we got the spirit of Jesus that he left here for us. Amen. So the woman with the alibis but mm -hmm. she knew that Jesus was precious. That's why she had to bring something to his feet. Yes, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you. And we know that God is precious. Yes. That's why we have to praise God. Lord, it ain't no show about this thing. It, we supposed to be praising God. As I read in the Bible, in Revelation, we supposed to be praising God. When we enter into the tabernacle, we supposed to be praising God. We ain't coming here to be looking pretty or looking fine or looking for somebody. We coming here for God. That's why we coming here for God because he's precious. Yes, he He's precious to us. Oh God, I thank you. Hey, thank you, Lord. Lord. Oh, thank you. I thank you, God. He's precious to us. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And back on you saying God is precious to us. And just like them back in the day didn't know how who God was. Today in this world, we most of us don't know who God is and how much God is valuable to our life. And we neglect God so much. That's why this whole pandemic thing is going on right now in the world because people have got lost and forgot who God was instead of them giving God they all because he he is their provider we're giving the earthly man our all instead of giving God all and all God wants us to do to just love him amen and that's it and it's just simple as that just love him pick up his Bible and he tell us everything as Pastor kind of said that's the blueprint right there is God Bible to get us closer to him so sister Don can you just break down the alphabet my God. What I love about that moment is just as evangelist Walker was stating, she saw who Jesus was. She saw his value. So she didn't have a problem coming to bear something to him because yes. the box, it, it, the value of it, it was like it was very precious back then. All the, what it signified was like a whole status. You, everybody just couldn't have that type of oil. So when she came giving it to Jesus, it was because you know who you are. And that's why when we use the example that if you know who I was, you'll treat me the way I deserve to be treated. That's what she was doing for Jesus. And the people around Jesus were jealous of what she was doing because they didn't think of it first. What they should have been doing was having gifts. What they should have been doing was bringing something to the table. But she knew who Jesus was and she loved him and she was willing to give all she had to him. And that's the same thing that we need to be doing in the body of Christ. And just like the word says, if you love God, you'll love my people. How can you say that you love God if you can't love those and you don't see me? And we see God's people. We should love God's people. We should be willing
willing to give to God's people and sacrifice knowing that God will replenish. People with poor mindset think, oh, I have to keep it to myself because it's not enough. But people with millionaire mindsets think, you know what? I can give it all because I know who I serve and God will give it back to me tenfold. But I thank you both. Oh my God. Ooh. I was Quanita, the woman of God, same question for you. Mm -hmm. How would you describe the woman with the alabaster? Oh my God, it's powerful, powerful. Um, just hearing the women of God and just hearing and knowing, uh, having read the story in the Bible, and we know that that alabaster box, it was full, it was full of this precious ornament that had so much value. And what what the word takes me to is, what do we have? Yes. What do we have for? God, what what's in our alabaster box? Oh what do what what do you have in that alabaster box that you can be able to give unto God? Come and that's when you have others around you seeing and say, Well, she go to church all the time. Yeah. That could be your alabaster right. box. Come on, now, she God. give her time to God. That could be your alabaster box. I mean, whatever that person is in that alabaster box, and then you have others that's on the side that's starting to look into it and, 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 and be jealous and. and talk about it but don't be jealous just learn what's in yours just use what God has given you and then when the others say well I see she using this oil and she doing this and she doing that you know it ain't for you to be jealous it's for you to learn to grow Amen. for you to learn to sow for you to learn to prosper for you to learn to uh, be uh, be used by God have thank you yes. Thank you, Lord. And Minister Wade, the same question for you. How would you break down the, the woman with the alabaster box? That was a very powerful uh, context on the woman with the alabaster box. She brought her very best. And when you think about loving people beyond what they ask for, mm -hmm. people, when you really love the way God says love, and when you are being loved the way you're supposed to be loved, you don't have to ask somebody to give you their best. It's like, yeah. my God, like, if you know that you if like Pep evangelist was saying when you value yourself you don't have to ask a man of God to to take your hand in marriage or to propose to you and to love you right when they know the value that's over your life it, you don't have to ask for uh, certain things we shouldn't have to ask for certain things when you know uh, you're giving your best and when you're being given your best God when we, that's how we do with God when we know who God is and we understand what all God did for us and that the weight on the cross and when we were not yet worthy he 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 stood on the cross for our sins and he was mocked and he was crucified not that's Jesus. valuable that's priceless and the yes, least we can Lord. do is to give him the very precious part of us he didn't ask for much just 10 percent of money but then when we can serve him from our heart when we can serve him from our spirit when we can yes. serve him from our mind you got to understand value but the problem is when we don't understand our value we will take the less we will settle for the less but when we give God the best we can receive the best hallelujah hallelujah amen and the last person that we learned about was Elijah when he was on his way to heaven and his servants had asked him a question and um and his servants had asked him a question and he told his servants what his servants had said they just wanted a double portion of his of they wanted the double portion of what all of what Elijah had, and Elijah was the type of man that the the things that he had just didn't mean so much to him. So he was like, "Well, you can just you can have my work." So, mm -hmm. Minister Evangelist Princess, can you just break down Elijah real quick? Elijah, when he was uh, getting ready to depart, uh, the other Elisha mm -hmm. said sure. that he wanted. The, a double portion, mm -hmm. but he told him if he's sowing when he leave, he could get it. So it's just like Pastor Kana. Mm -hmm. Pastor Kana is deep in the Lord, and he got a double. He got a yo shot. He got a double portion. So we here in the church, we should want to receive what Pastor Kana got. We should want to go higher, just like Pastor Kana mm -hmm. is going higher. We should want to uh, be in God faith, just like Pastor Kana be in faith. I know we can't do it sometimes, 24 hours a day, but we can do it. It's a way that we can do it. We have to steal away. We have to steal away and get on our face and we can go higher. The anointing that Pastor Canada have, 
it have flowed down to the body, the body of church. It have flowed down. So we can have that same anointing, that same power that Pastor Kinda had. And Sister Dunn, for you, um, if there was anything that you could say to any woman out here that um, is receiving less of love that they are giving out, what would you tell them? That is receiving less of love. And they give out more. And they are giving out more. Yes, yes. You want to know something? What I've learned through my journey is to continue to love people, but you don't have to love them next to you until, unless you've said, I do, unless you've made that commitment, unless you've obligated yourself. And I would only obligate myself if I feel like God has put this person in my life as the one. Unless that's the case, then you have every right to demand that a person give you what you deserve. Love less is it's just like it says abuse, and nobody should have to put up with abuse. Nobody should have to deal with that till they'll do you part unless that's what you've obligated yourself for. I believe in focusing on marriage, but if you're not married, then you need to focus on yourself and loving God and making sure that you're living up to your potential because in the word it says that we should be married to the Lord but he rather us marry than burn so in the meantime in between time I need to be serving God full fledged and that means no distractions and if God wants or created an Adam for me then that's when um, I can focus on that but that's only if God ordained it and I don't want it unless God ordained it you don't have to take love less or accept love less if God didn't ordain that for you Amen. Um, woman of God says Benita, what could you tell a young lady out here about receiving less love what I would say is if you feel that you're receiving less love or uh, less of Bruce uh, if it don't line up with the Word of God you don't have to be in it. Amen. You continue to do what you're supposed to do. You continue to love, love unconditionally. But if you find yourself in a position like that, you don't have to be in it. You stay in the will of God. Amen. Praise God. Amen. And Minister Way, for you, what would you leave for the um, young ladies out here that's in relationships and they're so in love and they're blinded by the love and don't know that they're being abused by getting less than what they are giving out. First of all, I would want to say, you know, you got to understand your value. And the only way that we can understand our value is by knowing the one that is most valuable, which is the Lord himself. And um, get in a good Bible-based church where you can grow in the knowledge and in the grace of God because the word is able to build us up. And that's what gives us the value. Uh, only the, the Lord, only the word himself. And what I would say to any uh, young lady or uh, woman of God that is out there that does not know and does not is not receiving the love that she has understand God's love understand the love of God that he has for the church and you don't have to settle for anything less other than what God has already given you which is the best he gave us his son to love us to die for us so if you represented any man that's not your husband uh, we might need to reevaluate that situation and set some boundaries in our lives because the value that God has for the church the bride he expects us to receive that same value so we got to love and be loved the way that God has required for us to be loved. Amen. Praise God. And um, I just want to tell any young lady, any woman of God that's out here that um, just first, first of all, we just need to learn how to love ourselves first before we love anybody Amen. and love God. Yes. To be able to receive the love that we supposed to have, we got to love God first. Amen. And I just want to say thank you all for tuning in and I hope you have been blessed by this. Yes.